everyone, it's Teresa, and today it is Try It Tuesday, where we are going to be trying some different crafts from different creators, and everyone will be linked for you below. And the first one up is going to be the Distressed Princess, and we're going to go ahead and get into it. We're starting off with some five gallon paint stir sticks. <laughs> um, I cut, the, had my husband actually cut them for me because the last time I tried, I struggled like an insane amount <laughs> with these things. Basically when you're doing it, make a 45 degree angle, make sure that you um, just, you know, have them measure out the right way or use a um, reverse can, like the canvas, the wood part of a canvas. Um, and don't staple your fingers. <laughs> I, I don't, I struggled with the stapler in a couple of times and I was so worried I was going to like staple my fingers to the wood and it just, that would not have gone over all that well. <laughs> so I'm going to wrangle it a little bit more and eventually I'm going to give it to my husband to fix. So <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't get it. Or like I said, just use the wood part of a canvas and you won't have to deal with this at all. Um, and we're just going to go ahead in with some of this Gorilla Glue. It is not for your hair. Make sure that you put it in, you know, just to kind of hold those pieces a little bit more securely together. And I wanted to use this little clamp, but I just couldn't get it to work right. So no clamp for this one today. You're going to make sure that you wipe off all of your excess glue because you don't want the stain to have a problem sticking. We're going to go ahead and go in with our wood filler and that's just kind of give us a little bit less of that gap. You're still going to see the gap just because it's held together with the staples. So don't worry about it though. It'll work out. Next, we're going to take some clear wax from Folk Art and some of this Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant. And what I'm doing is this is a piece of foam board. I've already drawn the lines for our faux wood, you know, our faux shiplap or whatever. And I'm making it like a gray tone. And this is sped up quite a bit. So obviously you're going to just go bit by bit building up the color that you're wanting. Um, I did this uh, method a couple of times different videos the method itself is from a youtuber called the peppermint cactus i believe i'll link that channel for you below as well and basically you're just like i said building it up building it up she does it a lot different than this but this is the way that was going to work for me at least on this project and i wanted more of this like gray tone as opposed to making it white or making it more like a like a wood tone. You know what I mean? That's just kind of the way I was feeling today. I wanted the grays. And we're just going to keep building it up. You can kind of switch back and forth if you want, you know, from the light to the dark. And if you get any spots that are too opaque, then you're just going to end up switching, you know, just grabbing just the clear wax. And I do eventually go in and put in some black just to darken it up a little bit. It looked like it was almost like too monotone. If that's the right word, that's not the right word. It was too, you know, one toned. It didn't seem like, see, here we go. We're going to grab the black just a little bit. Trust me, this is the um, Waverly chalk paint in ink. You do not need much of this. So see how it's just going to add in just a little bit more depth in there. It just adds just enough, you know, just enough of the touch of it to, you know, kind of help us make it look right. And don't worry, it, as you can tell, around the edges, I'm not really hitting it much. That's because I already knew I was going to be cutting that off. So next, we are going to use our obscure tool of the day. <laughs> it's a can opener. <laughs> Who would think, right? A can opener for crafting. Who knows? Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm giving myself like these little holes to go into this planter bucket from Dollar Tree. Be very careful though. It is definitely sharp. Um, I, I definitely cut my hand a couple of times on it. So um, I take off the majority of the bottom part. Uh, you can take off all of it. I would probably recommend taking it off because that is actually where I ended up getting my hands. So, so basically we're flattening it out a little bit and you can do it, you know, with a hammer, with your hands, this stuff is pretty thin. So I've painted it all in white and now I'm going to go in with Waverly chalk paint and mineral and folk arts antique wax. I'm kind of mixing them up and I'm not going to show you the whole process I go through for this antiquing because I did this for a while just to kind of get the full effect that I wanted. And I'm really kind of going in to any of the spots that are like bent. You know what I mean? Like the spots that are definitely bent, like they should not have been bent like that. I was like, you know what? I kind of want to show that off. So once I've added a little bit of that um, mixture of the wax and 
the paint, I decided I needed to pull off some of that paint off of the lettering. And just to give it so you can actually kind of still see it and I'm just doing that with that little finger sander. I will link it for you below. I got it from Target. That was the best priced one that I've seen so far. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of spots as well. Um, I would kind of seen recently one of my friends, Devin, um, and I'll link her channel for you below as well, where she did a project with this uh, particular tin as well. You'll definitely want to see that too. And I'm just kind of going back and forth with these. You can mix this is giving you a lot more of like that rusted tone, depending on how you mix it. Like if you put more of the antique wax, you get more rusted tone. You put it more of the mineral, you're getting a little bit different of a distressing. It just kind of depends on what your particular desired effect is. I really like the way it turned out though. It's definitely different than what I've usually seen. So here's our foam board and our frame, and we're just gonna go ahead and hot glue it all together. And this is just gonna give us, you know, a fair amount of hold there. And we're not putting anything too terribly heavy on it. So I'm not real worried about the weight, you know what I mean? So we're just gonna glue it all down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm then gonna take my hot glue and I'm gonna put it along basically the seam of like where the foam board meets the wood um, frame, just to give it a little bit of extra hold. Once that is done and it's nice and you know dry and everything, we're gonna go ahead and start adding in our bucket. And to do that, we're gonna basically do the same thing. We're gonna just add in some hot glue. <laughs> so I was playing around, like, should I put a stir stick on the back of it to give it something to hold on to? And I was like, you know what? Let's just dive right on in. So I'm just gonna grab my hot glue gun and I'm gonna give it, I, I, I was playing back and forth. Should I use a dowel, not use a dowel? I ended up not using one and it's perfectly fine. So we're just gonna cover that sucker in some hot glue. Be very careful because it is hot. And we're also gonna add it to that lip of the frame where it's gonna sit because that's gonna give us just a little bit of extra like tra like spot for it to hold. So just be careful though, it is very hot. I actually see I used a little spool of twine to push it down, get that last little bit. So next what we're gonna do is we're taking, even though you can't really see it that well, I'm taking just a regular stir stick and I'm gonna cut it down to kind of fit on the inside of that tin. Since I took away the bottom of it, I need somewhere for my uh, what normally people would use as fluorofoam, but I like to use a pool noodle. <laughs> and here we go. Most awkward camera angle of the day is going to be right here. Um, just so you could kind of see like what I'm doing. I'm putting down that stir stick and I'm adding some hot glue down to the bottom part. And then I'm going to hot glue over it to just give it a little bit of extra, you know, durability in holding on. Again, it's just getting a pool noodle on it. Here's how I styled it. I added a couple little bunnies on it just for, you know, Easter. So, like I said, today is Try It Tuesday. It is hosted by the lovely Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. I really, truly cannot say enough good things about this woman. She is super kind and just an all-around amazing person. I hope you go check her out and the playlist, which will be linked for you below. And of course, we can't help but do one of Sammy's crafts. <laughs> we're going to do this really pretty beaded garland, and we're using these little... Um, blocks from Dollar Tree and I wanted to show you this is the little cool contraption they have there it is stackable <laughs> and I painted it in a few different colors I did not have the same colors as Sammy so we went with pool from Waverly uh, ballet slipper from Waverly and then also I did a sh um, one that's called sheepskin from folk art and this is kind of the way i found best for me to paint them i kind of kept them all like pushed up against one hand and went like kind of like up and down strokes and then i went ahead and just moved each bead and did the top and so on and then kind of kept on going from there and that's just seemed to be the way that worked best for me with them on like their little skewer. See, and then I'll do the same thing on the other end of those beads. They ended up getting two coats each uh, just to kind of give them a little bit more opacity, I guess you could call it. And once we are done with that, 
see we're gonna go ahead and go in with mineral and I ended up using this like little fan brush and I wasn't I wasn't a fan haha <laughs> But I'm bump. Sorry, guys, it's late. Um, so yeah, I would. I wasn't the biggest fan of this. I would definitely stay with the normal way I distress, which is usually just with one of those little chip brushes. That's definitely a better option. And I got this really pretty scrapbook paper out of just a pack that I have from Joann's, and I'm just going to put it on our egg with a nice big glue stick and focus in on the parts uh, around the edge because those are usually the areas that uh, you don't get the glue on. So we're gonna just slap that little guy on there and we'll trim up all around the edges just to make sure that uh, there's not a lot of excess paper. And I did go around with mineral after the fact. Um, see, here I am. I'm just going to smooth it all out. I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself here. And we're going to just find that little hole and we're going to use our uh, tool, our little Cricut tool. Be very careful. I definitely poked myself with it. So um, maybe grab something else other than your thumb to put behind it. <laughs> um, this was like the day of just skewering myself and getting myself on shards of metal. <laughs> um, I'm going to use this lighter tone twine. I don't even know where I got that thing at. Um, just to give it a little bit of a lighter look. A lot of what I did today was much lighter. So we, um, we beaded the garland and I didn't want to show it to you so that you don't lose all faith in my ability to craft because it was kind of pathetic. Uh, I should have rewatched the video with Sammy doing it before I did it because she used tape. FYI, use tape. <laughs> um, and here is my little tassel. I just did a little tassel to put on the end. Um, instead of using a tie, what I did, I actually wind that little part around it and then just hot glue it down because I was trying to tie it and it just didn't seem to want to work for me. So, and then we'll tie it on to the bottom of the garland. And what I did not do here, which I wish I had, I wish I had left more space. Like, you know what I mean? Like more string that doesn't necessarily have the beads on it. Because once I went to put it on something, I didn't feel like it gave me as much uh, give as I would have liked. So we're just going to trim everything down. And then it's like, I almost lost it. See that, guys? I almost lost that piece of twine because I cut the knot down too to cut down too close to the knot. So I'm going to cinch it down and I'm just going to hot glue it down to save the day. Hot glue saves the day. <laughs> All right. So I believe, nope, almost done, but not quite. We're just going to go in with some antique wax and give it a little bit more. I just didn't feel like I got quite enough from the mineral um, chalk paint, the mineral, the paint color chalk. Ah, never mind. Sorry. Getting distracted by myself. Um, and I'm going to do it around the edge of the egg too. It definitely needed that. Like the mineral color was not enough against this paper. So just going to give it a nice little distressing there. And eventually it will be done. <laughs> but I, I definitely would recommend everyone to go and check out all of the fun creations everybody comes up with on the playlist. I know everyone's going to be doing their favorite DIYs from other creators. And I believe a lot of them are going to put kind of like their own spin on it. You know, like that first one, it definitely doesn't look like the one from the Distressed Princess. This one, I would say definitely looks very similar to the one Sammy did. Um, but there are some differences. So if you are loving all of these creations I am making today, don't forget to like and subscribe to this. So here it is all finished up. And then our next one we are going to do is from day and his channel name is Dave's Reefs and Things. And so first we're going to start off with a frame from the Dollar Tree. It was painted gray from something else. And I'm just going to uh, paint it in Waverly chalk paint and plaster. And we're going to just measure out some burlap. I am going to use that burlap and I'm going to put, <laughs> I like to repurpose things as well. This is just a piece of backing from vinyl, <laughs> um, but I've got some stencil vinyl that I already cut out a little bunny shape with off of my Cricut um, on Dave's video. He actually just, you know, hand cut it out on a piece of paper. You guys know if you are, have been around for a little while, I like my tools. So <laughs> I went to the Cricut for it. Um, so we're just going to put down that vinyl. It's kind of nice because like my bunny is like in hopping motion. It kind of gave a little bit of, you know, hopping 
<laughs> to my video today. Oh goodness. Um, so I'm going to put down something behind it because obviously the burlap is not, you know, it's not solid. So this way I'm not, you know, stenciling all over my desk. And I'm just going to use one of these little brushes from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to pounce pounce, 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 pounce. And we're just going to kind of try to give it a good, you know, amount of paint so you can really see it. And I believe I actually went back and did a little bit more. So here is the frame. It's all painted and we're going to go in with the Waverly chalk paint. You've seen me do enough distressing already. So I skipped over all of that. And we're going to cut an extra piece of burlap just because I definitely did not think that that burlap was going to be anything you could, you know, that you wouldn't be able to see completely through. So we're going to lay it down inside the frame. I'm going to use those little pieces that usually hold down the backing to hold down my burlap. Obviously that thing would just flounder, you know, flounder all over the place. So I'm going to glue down first in the corners just to give it kind of like a starting point or at least do a couple of little dabs. I didn't want it to just like fully go into all of the burlap because I was afraid that it would move and budge if I didn't do it like piece by piece. You know what I mean? And then I, like I said, I knew ahead of time that I'd cut off more than I needed. And I was definitely going to prefer that as opposed to not having enough. So we're just going to trim it down with however much is necessary. So you can't see around it. Um, when you're looking at the frame, I was close to the top, you know, I had almost could have gotten away with it, but I decided just to be, just to be on the safe side. And then we're going to add our second thing of burlap, just again, to make it to where you can actually, you know, not see through it. And we'll cut that down as well. And we're going to add a couple of wooden dowels just to hold, help kind of hold it in place. Um, the ones from Dollar Tree that are the shorter ones actually fit perfectly. So if you are recreating this and you want to use the wooden dowel holding down method, <laughs> very technical term that is, that's what I would recommend using are the short ones. They fit this frame perfectly. And if I remember correctly, this is a five by seven frame. So just getting the dowel in the right spot is always preferred. It's the preferred method. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like pushing down, you know, pushing down those things again on the sides. I push them down to hold the burlap, you know, a little bit more in place. And it needed a little bit of a backing. I wasn't having a good luck with having it just propped up against something. And this isn't even the right size. It's like a four by six. But here it is. It's all finished. Super cute. And on to our next one is going to be from Farm Charm Chic. Goodness, how do you say that that fast? <laughs> I know Emily does say it pretty well on her channel when she's describing, you know, when she's introducing herself. Um, so we are just going to add some of these little dots onto each one of these scallops. This little dish is from Christmas, as if you couldn't tell because it is green. Um, but she did this as a thrift flip. Um, so I went ahead and added them all to each scallop and then got one of these little jars. It's actually part of my holiday decor and we are sacrificing it to the Try it Tuesday DIY gods. <laughs> um, it's starting to wear a little bit. So I was like, you know what? This is as good a time as any to use it. So we're just going to add our hot glue. Now I could have, but I did not choose to um, add some E6000 to it. Uh, I wanted, I didn't want to have it completely like a permanent, permanent hole, just in case I want to take it apart and use it for something else. So if you do not want to do that, I would recommend using something like E6000. So I did um, two good coats of spray paint, and then I actually went in with some of the Adirondack white uh, chalk paint as well. And we're going in with Waverly Chalk Paint and Mineral to do all of our distressing. And I'm not going to show every bit of it because it did take some time, but uh, you're just going to kind of go around the rim first. And actually, I think I might have lied. I might be showing all of it to you. Um, then we're going to kind of go in and add a lot of detail around all of those little dots just so you can see them because obviously with the white, it's much harder to see them. So it's going to, you know, add a little something, something. I went in probably too heavy. I'm going to admit it. I went in a little too heavy with the distressing, but you know what? It's okay. I'm going to show you how to fix that if you do the same. I don't know. Is anyone else like that? Are they like super heavy handed with the distressing? <laughs> 
I'm going to do it along the sides as well. I think that in her video, she did it a little bit darker, um, a darker color. I think she did like a, maybe like an elephant. I can't recall exactly, but I know it was a darker gray tone, but I went, I've, I've been loving this mineral color chalk paint. So see, here we are. We're going to just go in with some of the white just to tone down some spots, almost give it like a little bit of a muddled look on some of those spots that are too, you know, that are a little bit too heavy with that, uh, that gray color. And I really like the way it ends up looking though. So FYI, this is a good method. This is a Savvy Crafts with Savannah method. See, we're just calling out like all of our favorite DIYers in this video today. <laughs> um, well, not all of them. I mean, goodness, I couldn't, I couldn't go through an entire video and call out everybody that I love to watch because we'd be here all day. I mean, not that you haven't been here for long enough as it is. Here it is all finished and we are on to our very last one. This one here is from Southern G More Girls. And this one's going to end up looking a lot different though. Um, so we're starting off with one of these wood bunnies and one of these napkins. I actually got it from Target. Uh, I thought it was too pretty and I have been waiting to decoupage it on something. Um, I'll be honest, this is my first go around with decoupage. Um, <laughs> I know if um, Annie from Indiana Jones is listening, she's probably cringing. Like, how could you have not done this with something yet? Um, but this is my first time, so it's okay. Um, so we're just coating it uh, with Mod Podge. I've already cut out the napkin and my goal was to get the majority of that flower in there with, without exposing, you know, the ears, <laughs> like I almost just did. And we're just gonna smooth it all down. And I'm just, I, I don't know, I just thought these napkins were so pretty. I mean, um, one thing I did do, it was like a three ply napkin. I did peel off this ply I, I'm not sure if there's a different uh, way of saying that. And then I trimmed off all of the excess just with those little flowers. And then we're going to go over it again with our coat of Mod Podge. And I have a little bit almost of like a, a little bit of the napkin left around the bunny. And I'm just kind of working on folding that over a little bit. Uh, I work back and forth between using the brush, and using my fingers. I think I end up eventually like using the Mod Podge directly onto my fingers to fold it over. So it kind of depends. I don't know if that's a normal method, um, but that was apparently the method. That's the method I was going with. Um, you guys have to let me know. Do you usually cut it like completely perfectly to fit or do you do something more like this? Let me know in the comments. So once you're done with that, I've got a little wood round and I believe it is six inches. It is from Target as well. And I stained that with the walnut uh, wood tent from Folk Art and we're just gonna glue our bunny down to that and voila, we're done. Here it is, super cute. So that being said, those are all of our projects. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you're new here from the playlist, please comment below, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I will see you guys next time.